सेव किया था ना मैं सिर्फ इसलिए गया था क्योंकि उसने मुझे कॉल किया दैट्स इट बट लिसन तो सेव इट फॉर समवन एल्स जिंदगी में सेव करना जरूरी है मगर जब बात पैसों की हो सिर्फ सेविंग से काम नहीं चलेगा इक्विटी म्यूचुअल फंड्स में इन्वेस्ट कीजिए और अपने सेविंग्स को आगे बढ़ने का मौका दीजिए म्यूचुअल फंड इन्वेस्टमेंट्स आर सब्जेक्ट टू मार्केट रिस्क रीड ऑल स्कीम रिलेटेड डॉक्यूमेंट्स केयरफुली दे कॉल्ड हिम बिली चाकोल बिग बिल्ट एंड फ्री स्पिरिटेड द कुकु यलांजी एबोरिजिनल रोम द पामर रिवर बेसन इन द लेट नाइनटीन सेंचुरी engaged in a one man war with the settlers arriving in the region to pillage its gold fields and steal its people's land little china man he could pick him up tie their hands together and put him up in a tree recall normal mitchell a local resident in a oral history and then he'd come back and put a spear through him pull him down and cook him local authorities E.G. Heap records in his book on the period wondered why the revenge cannibalism of the aboriginals of the Palmer River targeted Chinese shopkeepers and tenant farmers instead of the white settlers who had been exterminating aboriginal women, children, and men like vermin. Taste came the simple answer, ironic or otherwise. Too much salt, one said, like bacon. For much of this week, India has been transfixed by the strange story of the occult-inspired sexual fetishism and cannibalism emerging from the quiet Kerala village of Elanthur. So, why is this a national security question? Because there's a larger story that remains unexplored. Each year, multiple similar cases are reported. few make it to the inside pages of newspapers leave alone netflix the evidence we do have though is enough to ask if occult inspired killing isn't a distinct indian criminal typology just like the american serial killer or narco culture cults in mexico every kind of killing teaches us something important about the conflicts and neuroses hidden inside a society the recurrent themes in indian occult killing cases anxieties over marriage driving desire for children economic uncertainties are familiar to all of us like the pornographer the occult inspired psychopath puts the spotlight on secret inner torments we would much rather had remained hidden the national crime records bureau maintains no data for occult inspired or religious killings clubbing them together with other kinds of murders even the last 6 months though have seen at least a dozen lurid stories emerge publicly agra occultist hukam singh is alleged to have ritually dismembered a 2 year old to renew his tantric powers he said an amroha police allege saroj devi killed and dismembered her 18 month old nephew in another tantric inspired fertility rite a gujarat teenager thought to be possessed was starved to death by her own family from court records it's also clear that occult inspired murders have been a pretty routine feature of india's criminal justice landscape early in 1973 The Rajasthan High Court sentenced occultist Sardara Ram Dakot to death for the murder of 5-year-old Naresh Periwal and his 4-year-old sister Sarita. The children according to the court were slaughtered in front of an idol of the goddess Kali and their blood rubbed on the belly of Tulsi Ram, a local woman who was desperate to have a child. Kathiresan Samiar, an occultist convicted in 2010, told one family who consulted him that in order to be able to build their own home they must i quote give human sacrifice and that to an eldest boy of the family within 6 to 10 years old and it should be done on the next full moon night the advice tragically was implemented last year the odisha high court acquitted ganeshwar patabandha of the ritual sacrifice of 2 year old anirudh dhal whose body was found in the village well his tongue and a finger severed evidence of torture the court however noted the only evidence against ganeshwar 
was a legally inadmissible confession he made before the village panchayat where he admitted to human sacrifice before kali mata forensic examiners were unable to establish that burned human bones found at ganeshwar's home belonged to anirudh and no post mortem was ever carried out the case remains unsolved even though violence involving occult practitioners is frequently reported it seems to continue to be embedded within communities tantric raghunath one sexual assault prosecution in delhi reveals persuaded a couple that their i quote unmarried girl should perform puja at a cremation ground on the bank of the river yamuna a rajasthan rape case involving the occultist ganpatlal similarly centered around a fertility ritual involving other things and aloe vera rub arranged by the husband of a woman unable to have a child kerala itself has had a succession of occult link killings among them the 2019 murder of the village black magician krishnan kutti who was slaughtered with his entire family by the sorcerer's own apprentice and in spite of the killings occult temples are entwined with the state's other religious traditions attracting thousands of devotees tempting though it is to see occult killings as simply an artifact of superstition or backwardness these cases frequently involve educated individuals from middle class backgrounds a deeper explanation is clearly called for 22000 feet above sea level nestled in the heart of the andes the body we call lulai lakho maiden lay perfectly preserved where she was sacrificed 500 years ago The teenage girl's hair had been intricately braided and her face dyed in ritual red before she was buried alive together heartbreakingly with three miniature figurines made of gold, silver and oyster shells. Lightning girl age 6 was buried nearby. Lulai Lako boy age 7 had been interred among other things with extra sandals maybe for his walk into the next world for the inca the sacrifice of male and female children as well as young women of beauty and purity was a blood covenant with nature's blessings the children did not end their lives gently some were drugged before being entombed we know from dna studies others dispatched with a blow to the head The Aztec civilization anthropologist David Carrasco has written called the heart of the slain enemy warrior a precious eagle cactus fruit to be eaten after consecration with reverence and respect as the scholar Peter Whiteley notes cannibalism only became a dirty word somewhat late in the course of human social evolution anthropologists have suggested that human sacrifice helped establish social hierarchy in many pre-modern societies only collapsing when human groupings exceeded 100,000 individuals faith in the magical flourished even in societies where the religious establishment deemed these beliefs heretical the genitals of the medieval crusader jacques de maily historian christopher tyerman writes were cut off from his corpse and preserved and i quote so that they might if divine providence permitted beget an heir with similar valor to a medieval catholic inquisitor this belief would have seemed like witchcraft but it existed the practice of human sacrifice and cannibalism in some 18th and 19th century societies among others parts of africa fiji new guinea in tribes of sumatra various parts of north and south america was seized on by european imperial powers to legitimize colonialism in a thoughtful essay historian crispin bates has shown how exceedingly thin evidence of human sacrifice by gond adivasis was seized on by colonial officials and missionaries to justify their own power living in a culture that is profoundly if not always consciously influenced by the famous sigmund freud It's tempting to conclude that the Kerala occult killings, replete with group sex and ritual semen consumption, are about sexual deviance. Likely, sex is a part of the story. 
Eve Bischoff's majestic history of Friedrich Hartmann, the Hanover serial killer executed in 1925 for killing and dismembering dozens of local homosexual men and possibly selling their body parts for meat, shows he killed to recover masculinity lost when he was raped during his time in prison. Normal Mitchell's telling of Aboriginal Chinese conflict also involves sexual competition and anxiety. Immigrants from China's Kwantung, Mitchell writes, use their wealth as well as opium and rum to seduce and acquire Aboriginal women. The wife of the revenge cannibal Billy Charcoal, Mitchell recounts, had six children by a Chinese merchant. Through these relationships, Mitchell claims rightly or wrongly, venereal diseases spread across the Aboriginal community. But sexual anxiety and dysfunction aren't the only story. Billy Charcoal's story also, after all, involved revenge and colonialism. The criminal psychologist Catherine Ramsfeld has shown there is no one single element that binds together serial killers, psychopaths and other such killers. Instead, their motives run the entire spectrum of human emotion – shame, rage, sadism, profit, desire – to punish deviance. These are feelings all of us have, not just the murderer. The one thing that separates us from the serial killer, philosopher Hanno Sauer speculates, is empathy. Emotions play the same role for moral judgment that perceptions play for judgments about the ordinary external world, he argues. The serial killer lacks the same emotional apparatus as the rest of us and can thus act unfettered on her or his religious beliefs and morals. Lurid media accounts offer us colourful but ultimately useless detail. Where killers shopped or what cannibals had for dessert contributes little to our knowledge and understanding of this kind of murder. Likely, rigorous study of Indian occult colours like the profiling pursued by the Federal Bureau of Investigations over decades will yield better detection of crime and more effective prosecutions. But it will also have one unexpected benefit – to help us understand ourselves just a little bit better. I am Praveen Swami and I am National Security Editor of The Print.